made everything. The God of the Bible, triune, self-existent, sovereign without rival. Triune? Yes, one nature and three persons. Father, Son, and Spirit, same essence, unique working. How do you know this? From the only true evidence, the 66 books of the Old and New Testament. Let's go to Genesis 1. Let's read verse 26. Anthony Rogers had an excellent discussion, I think it was earlier today, on uh, Genesis 1.26, that it cannot be God speaking to angels or the earth and heavens, and you'll see why. God is speaking to others who, like him, have the power and the ability to create. <clears throat> and we know he cannot be speaking to the angels because the angels did not create man. God did it by himself. But when we say God did it by himself, are we saying that God as a single person did it by himself? Or God, as a plurality of persons, created man in his image. Let's see. Genesis 1.26. Let me unpack this. Genesis 1.26. Let's read this. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let him have dominion. Now, slowly, because I want them to catch this. If you're not paying attention, you're going to miss this. God said, Let us make man in our image and our likeness. And by the way, this is the only time in the chapter that God speaks to others. All throughout the chapter, he simply says, let there be, and there is. Let there be light, there's light. Let there be dry land, there's dry land. But when it comes to man, he changes his discourse. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Wow. He doesn't do that for any other part of creation. Wow. Read Genesis 1, he doesn't do it for any other part of creation. Only when it comes to man, he now speaks in the plural. And the context shows he's speaking to others. Let us Come together, make man in our image and our likeness. Now I want you to catch this. So I want you to read it slow. I don't want you to read it fast. And by the way, the word man is Adam in Hebrew. Let us make Adam in our likeness, in our image, and then pick it up from there. Read it one more time. Let them have dominion over the... Go back to the first part. Oh, okay. Sorry. Where it says him. Okay. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Mm -hmm. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. You're skipping something. No. Let's read it again. I'm going to read it from the beginning of the verse. Please. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Yeah. Let them have dominion okay. over the fish of the sea. I won't argue with you then. If your translation says that, then we'll go. Let who? Them, the people. Them? You sure it's them? Keep going. No, you're right. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. You're right. I'm just going to go keep going. No, no, you're right. Let us create Adam in our image after our likeness. Let them. I'm trying to make you see what was there in the text. Keep going. Let them. Keep going. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle all over. Now read 27 when you're done. So God created man in his own God image. created Adam in his own image. Keep going slowly. In the image of God, he created, created him. So Adam is him, right? Yes. Adam is him. But then finish it. Male and female, he created them. Now I'm really confused. Adam is him, ones up becoming them, ones up becoming male and female. So Adam is a him, ones up becoming male and female. Who ends up becoming them? Adam, him, male and female, them. What are you trying to tell me? That the one Adam is more than one person? Did you guys read the text? Because I see that's why I say can't. Yeah, you can't read the text. You got it. There you go. Yeah. So what is the implication of that? Adam and Eve. The word Adam means man, mankind. It also can refer to Eve's husband. Genesis 4:1. Adam, Adam knew his wife Eve. In chapter 2, when, when, the, when Moses becomes a bit more specific in writing this, and identifying names, but... That's in chapter 4, verse 1. The Hebrew idiom takes the words, and, you know, as you know, brother, it, yes. it makes them into words that are identifiable, and they can, they create them into proper nouns. Exactly. Just like God can be a proper noun, Absolutely. or it can be a generic noun. Absolutely. But where am I going with this? Follow me. Him and is it a coincidence them. that in this point in creation, God speaks in the plural, when speaking of Adam, who ends up becoming plural himself? In other words, the creation of Adam in the likeness of God is a reflection that like Adam is a community of persons, the God who created him is a community of persons. That's, right. That's where I'm going with this. That's what I want you to see. 
You, are, you understand where I went with this? or Because yeah. that's why I said we're going to park it here. This is meat if you understand what God is doing here. This is the first time in the narrative he speaks in the plural. Let us make Adam in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. And then verse 27 says, God created man in his own image. So that, what, that our image becomes his own singular. Our, his image. So the his is the our, the our is the his. And then it says he created Adam in his image. And then Adam becomes male and female. It becomes more than one person. In other words, what you're supposed to see in Genesis 1, the one Adam is more than one person. It's a community of persons, specifically male and female, as a limited reflection of the fact that the one God who created him is also a community of persons. Yes. Is everyone with me? Yes. Okay. Let me further hammer this point. If I ask you this question, this is why I said I'm going to park it. And you're going to see where the Spirit comes in. I'm going to show you the Spirit in a minute. Just bear with me. There's a lot of meat to unpack, and I'm going to try to do my best to make it as simple as possible. <clears throat> when the woman was created, what was her name initially when she was created? Isha. Isha, Isha right? Genesis 2, verse 23, correct? Yeah. Actually, her name was initially Adam. And then she was called Isha, and then she was called Eve. Yeah. Her name was actually Adam at the beginning, and then the man called her Isha, meaning woman. That's Genesis 2, 23. Okay. Then after the fall, he called her Eve. Because she's the mother of all living. Go to Genesis 5, 1 and 2 so you can see my point. You're going to see where I'm going with this. Just follow with me. Genesis 5, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> Let's see what happens here. Now, what I want you to do, sister, and your translation may not do this. Every occurrence of the word man is Adam in Hebrew. So what I want you to do in Genesis 5, 1 and 2, just say Adam. Don't say man. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Genesis 5, 1 and 2. Read it for me. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam in the day... That God created man. So I said, say Adam and you said man. Sorry. Let's try this again, verse 1. Okay. <laughs> this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created Adam, he made him... So Adam is him, singular here, right? Mm -hmm. He made Adam. He made him, Adam, singular, keep on. He made him in the likeness of God. He created them... So the him now becomes them. Male and female, and blessed them, and called them mankind. So even though I said, said Adam, she again defies me. <laughs> oh, you mankind rebellious woman. In the day oh. Genesis 5, 2. He called them Adam in the day he created them. That's what the Hebrew says. This is the book of the genealogy, generations of Adam. In the day that God created Adam, he created him in his image and likeness. He created them, made them male and female, and named them Adam. That's what the Hebrew says. So male and female together are called Adam. Why? Because they're the same genus. They're the same nature. Adam can be a proper name or can denote the nature or the class that someone belongs to. But what's my point? Adam is them, plural. As a reflection of the God who created them is also a plurality of persons. This is why God speaks in the plural. Let us make man, this man, this Adam, will also be plural like us. Like Adam is a community of persons in fellowship with each other. That reflects the fact that the God that made Adam is also a community of persons in fellowship with one another. Now let me prove to you that when God uses the plural, He is speaking to another divine person who happens to be God as a reflection of the fact that this man who's a community is reflecting the fact that God is a community. Let me prove that to you. Go to Genesis 1-2. Genesis 1-2. Who's there with God supervising creation? Assisting God in the creation of the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-2. One, one, one says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty or void. And the spirit of who was brooding or hovering over what? Read verse 2 for me. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So here's the spirit of God who is active in creation. He's hovering. Brooding over the waters, as, as you find the same verb used in Deuteronomy 32.11 about a chick or an a eagle that hovers over its nest. When an eagle hovers over its nest, nest what is it doing? That same ver verb is used in Deuteronomy 32.11 about an eagle hovering over its nest. Why is it hovering over the nest? What is it doing? Feeding. Say it again. Feeding. 
It's feeding, protecting. protecting. So here the Spirit of God is overseeing and superintending creation along with God. So when he says, let us make man, he's speaking to the Spirit. Let me back that up. When he says, let us make man, he's talking to the Spirit. At least we know it's the Spirit. As far as the Son, that awaits the New Testament revelation. What I'm going to prove to you from Genesis 1, Genesis 2, of Job 33, is that God is speaking to the Spirit and saying to the Spirit, let us come together and make man in our image. Go to Genesis 2, 7. I'm going to take it step by step. You asked me about the Spirit, so I'm going to show you the Spirit. <clears throat> Genesis 2, 7. <laughs> Yahweh God formed man from the dust of the ground. Genesis 2, 7. Yahweh God formed man from the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The little translation. What did God breathe into his nostrils? The breath of life. Lord, you're the only one, only one who didn't sin, only one who didn't bend with temptation pressing in. First, Adam gave in. After that, Abraham, Noah did, Moses did, and many men before them. Yes. Israel, after you split the Red Sea, after you rescued them from Egyptian tyranny, many kings and many prophets, many priests just couldn't stop it. Man is so sin prone and can atone for our own problems. Yet in 